Hey YouTube, Joel Boy here. So, um, as many of you have noticed, I did not actually upload my video, my review to chapter 843. The reason for this is mainly because I was just extremely busy. I only had a little bit of time available in order to make the video, render it, and then upload it and then unfortunately I tried something new and it backfired on me a little bit. I ended up wasting some time trying to uh, problem solve some of the issues since I had never done it before and long story short I ran out of time and then it got too late and I really didn't feel like uploading the video it was just too late. So with that being said um, that is why I did not upload my review to chapter 843. However, there is still a ton of things that I want to talk about in regards to the last chapter of One Piece. And we'll start off with this thing, which is, um, I actually saw this mentioned to me by someone in my comment section, and then I checked videos and noticed that Rogers Base also noticed this as well. And I want to talk about this and explain my thoughts on it, which is that if you'll notice from this last chapter of One Piece, there is exactly one panel. One panel in which Sanji's eyebrows are not the same as they normally are. His eyebrows are on the wrong side. As you'll know, most of the Vinsmoke children have different eyebrows to Sanji, and in this particular panel, Sanji had the traditional Vinsmoke eyebrows. So many people's initial thoughts to this is that this might be some kind of mistake. Um, and so this could definitely be the case. However, I'd like to think that this is actually intentional. We won't know for sure until the next upcoming chapters are released, and then this is either revealed to have some significance, and if so, then it's clearly not a mistake, or if it's not brought up again, I think that we can safely assume that it was a mistake. And I don't think that we're going to ever get any official clarification of this detail until we actually get into the chapter in which it's relevant or we find out that it isn't relevant at all. But besides the possibility that this is a mistake, there is also the legit possibility that this is intentional. And if so, I have some speculations and I also want to clarify some thoughts that Rogers Base offered and I think a lot of people would be very likely to believe about Sanji's eyebrows in this particular panel. The first thing that I want to bring up is that yes, it is very odd. There is exactly one panel in which Sanji's eyebrows go the wrong direction. In the panel before this, Sanji's eyebrows are correct. And in the panel after this, Sanji's eyebrows again are correct. So it is literally just one panel. But if it is indeed significant, a lot of people are speculating that this has something to do with Brulee's powers, that Sanji is in some way mirrored. And I want to debunk this. I don't think Sanji is mirrored. And the main reason that I think this is because if you actually took a program and mirrored Sanji, what you would produce is not what we see in this chapter. Here I used an online program to actually mirror an image of Sanji to show you what you would actually get if you mirrored him. him and it's clearly different from what we see in this chapter. Additionally, because this happened in the space of exactly one scene, we have Sanji normal, Sanji uh, with his eyebrows changed, and then Sanji normal again. This really doesn't open up for the possibility for Sanji's eyebrows to be affected by some sort of mirroring power. If Sanji's eyebrows had been wrong the entire time, firstly, we would know that it wasn't a mistake, and second of all, uh, we would have more information available to suggest that maybe some power was operating on Sanji's eyebrows, potentially him being some sort of copy created by Brule. But this is not the case. So while it might seem incredibly obvious to some people that this is a mistake, I do want to throw out one idea which could potentially explain just this one panel having uh, wrong eyebrows. And this actually goes back to a detail learned in some of the recent chapters, um, which is that Reiju gave Sanji some kind of mask. And this mask was intended to heal him because he had sustained damage from Niji and he needed to look presentable for the wedding. Could this mask have something to do with Sanji's eyebrow spontaneously changing? in one panel in this chapter. I think a lot of people got the general impression when this mask was first introduced into the story that it would actually have some importance to the plot outside of just correcting Sanji's face and making him look good for the wedding. 
It just seems like a random detail that wasn't worth throwing in there because, frankly, Oda could just have ignored Sanji getting beat, beaten up. Um, he does this all the time with Luffy or anybody else. They get beat up and then in a couple chapters their face looks completely normal. Oda could have easily done this. But instead, he chose to explicitly explain how this problem was solved in the story. And so, this leads people to believe that this mask will have some other importance. Whether it, be it comes undone at some point in time during the wedding, or whatever your imaginations can possibly create, something might happen with this mask. So I definitely think that it opens up the door for the possibility that this mask is in some way uh, allows Sanji to basically change his eyebrows. Now what would be the importance of doing something like this? The most obvious speculation that I can come up with is that it allows the Vinsmokes in some way to control Sanji at least temporarily. And this control over Sanji is portrayed visually as him having the same eyebrows as his siblings who he detests. But thinking this is a possibility brings up a very real question, which is that the person who gave Sanji this mask, apparently out of the goodness of her heart for um, wanting to make Sanji look presentable, not because she was told to, but because she wanted to, was Reiju Vinsmoke, who at this point in time is showcased as an ally to Sanji. Perhaps not as far as to say an ally, but she's definitely a fan of Sanji. She wants to see him alive and well. She definitely would have uh, preferred Sanji never have been found by Judge Vinsmoke in the first place. And so, as I said, this is the general impression that we have from details in the story. This is definitely my impression of Reiju Vinsmoke. So why would she give him some kind of mask that, while at the same time making him look presentable, could potentially control him in some way at the same time? That seems really underhanded. But going back to the context in which this happened, we have to keep in mind that Sanji didn't really do anything that he didn't want to. Sanji uh, has a lot of things riding right now on his relationship with the Vinsmokes and making sure uh, that he actually does what they say. First of all, he can't leave the island without his hands blowing up. This is something that needs to be resolved. Um, and so Luffy can't just take Sanji, even if he beat up all of his brothers and his father, they can't just leave at this point in time. They need to directly confront Big Mom in order to get those handcuffs off of him. Sanji knows this, Luffy does not. And even if they do get the handcuffs off of Sanji, Sanji has to worry about owner Zeph and his life. If Sanji goes against Big Mom and the Vinsmokes, and even if he wins, Zeph could still die. So again, something needs to be resolved with this whole situation. Uh, Sanji can't just leave without knowing for sure that Zeph is going to be alright. And lastly, defeating the Vinsmokes, even by themselves, is no easy feat. I'm sure Sanji understands this, and so uh, to put Luffy in that situation where he must defeat the Vinsmokes um, is probably not a smart idea, and also another reason why Sanji has to, at this point in time, take the conflict away from Luffy and the Vinsmokes and make it a conflict between Sanji and Luffy because Sanji is not going to kill Luffy, the Vinsmokes legitimately would try. So with this being said, even if Sanji was being controlled at the moment that he said this line in which his eyebrows were switched, this is to the benefit of what Sanji wants, which is to create a conflict between himself and Luffy to on one part prove to the Vinsmokes that he has no intention of leaving, and then also at the same time gives him the opportunity to speak directly to Luffy, uh, whether by whispering during their fight or something along those lines to explain the situation fully to him. So basically what I'm suggesting is that Reiju actually helped Sanji do what it is that he wanted to do because perhaps this one line and maybe even the line before this where we don't actually get a clear shot of Sanji's eyebrows but we know that he was speaking, perhaps these lines were too difficult for Sanji to actually utter out loud. And with this being said, Reiju being on top of the ball helped Sanji out. But still this isn't enough to actually justify putting this in the story. Just having Reiju be able to control Sanji momentarily to help him do what he needs to do is just not something that is relevant enough to the story to actually include it as a detail, unless it has another role to play. 
So what I'm suggesting here is the possibility that right now Reiju may be able to control Sanji, but perhaps in the future, one of his brothers or his father may be able to use this technology against him. So yeah guys, that's what I wanted to share with y'all. Obviously this could very easily be a mistake, but I'm really hesitant to believe this is the case because there's one defining difference between Sanji and all of his brothers that is makes him more different than anything else. Besides his hairstyle and his goatee, it's his eyebrows. And so to draw this one defining trait of Sanji different in this one panel to uh, resemble his brothers and his sister just honestly seems like a very huge mistake to me. So huge it makes me think that it may not actually be a mistake. But yeah guys, don't hate if you, you just think that it's a mistake and you think that I wasted, you know, 10 minutes of your time. Just keep in mind the possibility that it isn't a mistake. And if this is the case, then this would be a clue. And a clue needs a theory to in order to explain it. And so that's what I've tried to do in this post. Um, obviously there could be some holes. Um, it's not the most perfect theory in the world, but perhaps there's other ideas as well that might be better uh, to explain what happened. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Uh, like the video if you like the video. I'd appreciate it if you subscribed. And as always, dudes, have a wonderful day.